All right, Buddy Greenbloom, good to see you. Well, thanks for having me here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I want to dive right into it. Um, I was listening to, uh, sorry, to, to your new single, right? Um, I, I remember those times. And maybe you could walk us through a little bit of the inspiration and the, uh, you, you know, and the process behind that. Well, um, the song I originally recorded um, as a scratch track probably about six months ago. And it came from a poem that I had written after 9-11 and put on the shelf for 20-some-odd 20, 20 years. I hadn't recorded anything since 2003. Uh, my last record was My Little Underground. So uh, when the pandemic hit, I was kind of encouraged to, uh, you know, dust off the soul song, dust off the guitar, and, and get myself back in the studio to uh, make the recording. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, I was looking through your bio and, and uh, you and I share something in that we both lived in Tempe, um, you know, in the early 2000s. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, you know, because you were, you were well established in the scene at that time, but we never ran into each other, which is kind of funny to me because you know, I was playing a, probably a lot of the same circuit as you were. We must have just missed well, each other. <laughs> interestingly enough, um, bro, I had a recording studio in Tempe. Mm -hmm. uh, my my uh, project name is Buddy Greenbloom. Uh, my given name is Ralph Breck, and I'm a fine artist uh, out of the Tempe and Phoenix art scene. And um, I might have been more familiar to people in, at that time in that scene as a fine artist um, because mm -hmm. I was, you know, I'm an engineer. I'm a, I'm a producer. So people might not have associated me as a performer uh, considering I'd taken a stage name and I wasn't necessarily working uh, uh, the Tempe scene, which was known for the Jim Blossoms and yeah. Roger Klein and the Peacemakers and, and a lot of the bands that I grew up with. I mean, I went to McClintock high school with, with Robin and, and, and um, Phil Rhodes. I mean, David Rhodes, his brother played in my band. We used to open for rain convention, which was DH's band before he became a part of the refreshments. So um, it's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a bit of legacy there, you know, and, and I don't want to toot, toot that too much because I just had the fortune of growing up in Tempe and graduating from McClintock in 92. Right. That's that's interesting. So uh, as a recording engineer, did you did you attend the uh, conservatory or? I did. I was the okay. first graduating class in 96. When no Mike kidding. Jones, when Mike Jones first launched the conservatory and my wow. street located a mile south of the uh, at Southern and McClintock. And we had it floated out of it. We floated it uh, in a carport and uh, fully isolated um, uh, 16 track room. It's pretty nice. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, was a, that was a different era, you know, for that town. Oh, it yeah. was, man. It was magical yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. It was, I remember it was, those times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like the whole Mill Avenue, you know, for those of, for anybody, you know, outside of Arizona, you know, Mill Avenue was kind of like, um, you know, it was the it, it was the street that was connected to it Arizona was the State. Nexus. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Really was outside of Seattle. Mm -hmm. I think Tempe and Mill Avenue was the nexus of the music scene in the West Coast. I agree. So, I mean, you know, we had Meat Puppets coming up yeah. from Tucson. We had everybody on the West Coast clamoring to get into our venues in Tempe. Yeah. It, it was it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, and and we can't forget about Calexico, you know, like <laughs> Tucson, our, our our Tucson heroes, you know. <laughs> well, any, you know, I I was listening to um, Better Off. I remember those times, and it struck me as being such a uh, you know, if I can use the word, kind of like classic country sound. It has a very you know to me anyway, kind of a very like throwback to those grittier recordings, you know, um, maybe like, you know, 1950s, 1960s. Am I, am I way off with that or? No, you're not. Oh, There's okay. actually, if you look back uh, to Dwayne Eddy and, and Lee Hazelwood and Buck Owens back in the 1950s, Buck Owens was one of the, uh, the KNIX DJs there in Phoenix mm. and he got a start. Um, he's, his family broke down in Mesa, Arizona on the way to California before he even made it to Bakersfield. <laughs> he got stuck in Phoenix and, and he became right. a radio DJ for a young fledging FM station when AM was, was dominating. And that young fledging station was KNIX. And, uh, you know, we have a long legacy in Arizona of this style of music and, and the uh, Phoenix sound 
mm-hmm. was, was championed at Ramsey's studio, uh, Floyd Ramsey's studio right there on 7th Street at, at, at the uh, Arizona Reporters. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that whole twangy rockabilly echo that we know of, uh, for mm-hmm. surf rock and for rockabilly started right in Phoenix. Gosh, that's crazy. I, I didn't know that. That's well, you know, another, cool. another beautiful thing is used to be a wonderful club that every Western artist wanted to play called JD's right on the Tempe Scottsdale border. And, and for uh, seven nights a week for two years straight, um, Waylon Jennings had a house gig there. Wow. He was okay. the house band. Okay. Yeah. That's, Taylor. Yeah. All right. So you, you come up from the pedigree, you know, uh, my, my aunt, my aunt Pat, God bless her memory. Uh, when I was three years old, I, I was sitting on her drum throne at the Cheyenne frontier, uh, uh rodeo, uh, all the, all the parties after the rodeo, all the, all the cowboys I grew up amongst and, and I've had the great fortune of being on the floor at the Houston livestock and rodeo show at those events. I saw George Strait play his very first rodeo at the, at the Houston livestock and rodeo show back in the eighties. Oh man. Oh, I wonder what that was like. Oh, heavenly man. To be, yeah. I mean, to have grown up, I mean, I've worked with Willie. Uh, as a stagehand, I've loaded in his back line at Woodstock 99. I've met uh, Brian and Billy uh, or uh, mm. uh, Willie a few times. Uh, I was thinking of his, his sister, Bobby, just passed away. God bless her memory as well. The family is amazing, amazing uh, act to watch live and a tremendous influence on me, obviously. Mm-hmm. And right. you nailed it. You nailed the sound. I mean, although I'm not at, I live in Texas briefly, but I'm an Arizona soul. And, and I right. really wanted to capture that dry, gritty desert sound. Yeah. And I'm yeah. glad you you, you were able to pick up on that. I feel we accomplished that well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I love it, man. I, I, I think it's, you know, there's so much music out now that is, well, you know, and you as an engineer could appreciate this. I'm sure it's like, it's way overproduced. It's way too, you know, it's miss it. it, it it's like, it sounds like, and I'm an e- electronic musician myself, but when everything is so hyper computerized, you know, that there's, I don't know, I, I feel I'm, I'm sounding kind of curmudgeon right now, but I feel like we're missing soul, you know, in our modern music. It's, you know, this is what Towns Van Zandt and, and a lot of the folk musicians of the seventies felt about Nashville at okay. the rhinestone cowboy time, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, they, they felt that that's why you ended up with the outlaw country scene and you ended up with the Bakersfield scene and, and, and that whole, uh, um, that grittier sound that we've come back to that's been resurrected, um, even more so now with EDM and electronica and, 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 yeah. uh, rap and, yeah. and hip hop having dominated the airwaves for decades now, mm-hmm. a whole, whole generation of electronic music. So I think there's a, a natural yearning. Uh, not just amongst Gen X, which I'm a part of, but, but amongst even younger people, like millennials like Sierra Farrell, who I want to give a shout out to that young lady. She's doing tremendous things. She just got signed to Rounder Records. Uh, my wife got to catch her at the Troubadour out here in Hollywood, and, and she's doing things. She sounds like Loretta Lynn or, or Patsy Cline, man. She is fantastic. Okay. And, and I'm just glad to be in good company at this time in American in, in, in world music history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how, okay. So how do you offset that with like, I was looking at your website and um, you know, some of the uh, some of the songs that are included, like in your set list um, you know, covers, for instance um, you run the gambit, you know, I was looking at it. You've got like cure and erasure and, you know, like how does, how does that fit in with like, you know, a, yeah, a show. yeah, no, I could see that. No, I could see that. Um, you know, I, I grew up as a child in the new wave. You know, I, I was a big fan of the cure, Depeche Mode, uh, um, here, all yeah. of that, uh, uh, punk rock, the Ramones, Talking Heads. And, and I always thought I was going to be in a new wave band. I always thought my band would be my, the band that we used to have at, in Tempe at McClintock that opened for the Jim Blossoms was a two piece with um with the uh, sequence drum tracks and bass people used to throw beer bottles at us at hollywood alley nice. where's the drums <laughs> you know because it was you know unheard of in 1991 92 to be playing with sequencers right. i mean it was just european bands doing that and 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 and, and i thought that's where i would stay mm-hmm. so it's kind of an evolution and and i'm a big fan of the jesus and mary chain and the fact that they could take folk music heavily distort it overdrive it Put, a, put it through all sorts of harmonic dissonance and then create this new genre of shoegazing and, and, mm-hmm. and post-punk. I mean, wow. And it's really just great Scottish 
Celtic folk music and, and, and tra traditional rock and roll. Yeah, I was listening to or watching somebody did a I, I don't know who does it, but they did the um you know, before shoegaze was shoegaze or before electropop was electropop, they have these like mini documentaries uh, on YouTube. And uh, the Jesus and Mary chain was one of those that was like heavily featured in the, you know, in that like evolution of shoegaze. And, you know, I'm a big group for those guys and they know it. Uh, Jim, yeah. William, if you ever <laughs> see this video, you guys know I love you. They've got a copy of my vinyl record. I did a, a 10, a 10 song uh, tribute record to them. That was my record I did wow. back in 2003. Every okay. song on the vinyl record that I pressed in Nashville uh, is theirs. They wrote it. I licensed their songs from Warner Chappelle uh, through Harry Fox Agency. Did the whole thing formally. Um, recorded it in my studio in Tempe. Cool. And and it was you know since then I've got to get I've got to know you know Jim casually meet him in his other, a couple of other iterations of the band and. And just casually get to know uh, 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 them, you know, as musicians. But man, they they they're like wine and cheese, man. They're if you haven't seen them, they're only they're the best they've ever been. They mm. truly are at the top of their game now. So you know, I got to see them at the Fonda Theater, and it was like, man, how cool, you know. And then be backstage with them after it was pretty cool, darn cool too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've uh, you've got new projects in the works, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no. So we're we're working on this record. The first uh, song I remember those times, the little nostalgic song, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that's very Western, Western influenced. Sons of the Pioneers, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, Buck Owens, mm -hmm. all very uh, uh, Jim Croce, uh, Croce. I don't know how to say his name. He's a big. <laughs> I could right. compare it to him a lot, and, and I'm grateful because he's such a great songwriter, and and the, it's a consistent comparison. So. Um, I, I'm really taking that Gordon Lightfoot and, and Jim, Jim Croce uh, uh, comparison um, with gratitude. Uh, but, but the new record that we're working on, it's a full album. I'm working with a, a, a great guitarist. He's, a, he's in a, a band called the Vignatis. His last, his last name is Vignati. Mm -hmm. And Tracy and Fabrice Vignati um, are co-producing the record for me here in Los Angeles and, and uh, they do a, a rockabilly act that incorporates gypsy and klezmer mm. with rockabilly. So it's a really cool original sound of their own, but, but uh, Fabrice, in addition to tracking all my vocals, uh, Tracy arranging the vocals for me and coaching me, um, Fabrice is also the lead guitarist on, uh, on the, on the record, which is incredible. I'm mm. really stoked to have someone, a Grammy nominated lead guitarist on this record. Crazy. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so uh, is the sound, are you, are you kind of carrying that over from, I remember those times or. Are oh you, yeah. yeah. Had, and, okay. And you'll find, you'll find that it, it, it kicks more. And even I got a song called rodeo grounds, which isn't necessarily about a rodeo. It's about a surf break uh, at the Ventura, Ventura County fairgrounds where they have a rodeo and a County fair every year. But that particular surf break is is notorious for big waves and lots of competition. Okay. And so I make the comparison in the song and it's just a down home. Uh, it's a real square dance kind of hoedown song. So cool. I, you, you'll find that I just keep it. I keep it real. I keep it very organic and, and acoustic. And um, I, on um, Tent City, which is the song that I'm going to be releasing next. I even get into yodeling. I do really? uh, some yodeling in harmonies like Sons of the Pioneers. Have you, and, wait, have, have you, have you always done yodeling or did you have to No, I mean, I, I, I picked up on it kind of in this, you know, where does the synthesizer go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. What do I do for that sound? Right. <laughs> so, so it was kind of like, well, a whistle or a yodel fit just fine. <laughs> cool. Cool. Cause not everybody can do it, you know? So. Well, I, I kind of falsetto and my breaks are really right. random and I'm not as controlled as say Jimmy Rogers or some of the classic yodeling cowboys, but, um, but, but I, I give it a good go. Great. Great. Well, what about live performances? Are you scheduling any of that or? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a concert coming up at Coolix Woodshed on April 6th, which is my birthday. Um, Sweet. I, I'm going to be, I'm really yeah. excited about that. I'll be playing with some local uh, performers who uh, been rehearsing with me to get a, my life set together. It's sounding rad. I mean, to have a, a, a live band jam. I'm usually singer songwriter. So to have the whole band is just fantastic. So if you're in LA, uh, hit me up, buddygreenbloom.com. I'll be happy to put you on the list for that. It's a private party, but 
more the merrier. You, you'll be my guest. Very cool. Well, uh, you know, it, it, it's really cool to talk to another, uh, you know, millennium uh, space occupying Tempe cat, you know, cause that's, that's a part Rad, of my youth man. that I, yeah, that I miss. So um, yeah, well, thank you so much for making the well, time. Well, I appreciate you having me, man. I hate to yeah. cut it short. I actually got to get scooting, but, but dude, right. thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you, to share my story yeah. and to meet you, you know, yeah. keep in touch and, and I can't wait to see how you, how you put this out there. All right. Sounds good, man. Take care. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.